Okay, everybody, good afternoon, almost. I'm Zavit Rising. I'm a senior vice president at Stratasys, responsible for consumer business, and yes, not less than fashion. In today's presentation, I'd like to show you how we revolutionize fashion with really a cutting edge innovation. In the agenda, we'll take a look at the fashion market and then right off the Stratasys Polyjet technology, yes, the core technology that we know for the last 25 years, how we turn that into 3D fashion technology where we print directly on fabrics. We'll look into this technology, then collection overview, the J850 textile solution, and we'll end with a few words about Stratasys. So let's uh, start with this journey. Previously in Vegas, I'm taking you earlier this year in January, Stratasys is holding the annual partner meeting. We are just crossing the street to the luxury shops alley to find the Dior bags and the Alexander McQueen shoes that are using our own technology, the 3D fashion technology. So this is happening. Those are items that are sold not as one-off, not as customized one piece. This is production in the happening. So let's start with what's this market all about. This is about the global personal luxury growth, and this one is growing double digit year over year. You could tell the blip in 2020 with the COVID-19 situation, and then more than that, a renaissance. And in fact, I would say that cost per part here at least when we talk luxury, when we talk personalization and customization, is not the issue. Of course, when we talk 20,000 shoes of Alexander McQueen, yes, it gets into the equation. But to start with, this market is looking for particular trends that I will share with you right now. So firstly, the fashion brands are organized in clusters. Those clusters, you will see here various names, Louis Vuitton, uh, under that, the Dior, Fendi, uh, DKNY. We can see another one with Chloe and Dunhill. What's characterized those clusters is the following. Innovation is key. Sustainability is probably the first thing they will ask about. They would be very secretive about their design ideas. And even within the same company, I'll have to meet with different departments and teach them all about that because they will not share information. So this is the picture. The key trends, those companies are spending fortunes on sustainability. It's not a secret that the fashion market is one of the most polluting ones, probably second to oil and gas in terms of waste. Let's remember those trends, because when I'll tell you about 3D fashion technology, you will see how we solve those pains with 3D printing. So sustainability is key. It's all about printing on recycling, uh, recycled uh, fabrics. It's all about printing exactly what you need without so much waste. We talk about stores that win back their role, and this is after the, the big revolution of e-commerce. There's still the need for the touch, the feel, the personal attendance of a client. Looking at authenticity, people want to present and reflect their emotions. And I'll show you in a minute how we do it so well with 3D fashion technology. Health and wellness, and of course, generational shift, need to have accessibility to all generations to create. So, so far, these are you know, the main things that we inquired, because when, whenever we get into a business, let's get the numbers on the table. And we said, okay, the target segments by business potential would be definitely apparel, bags and accessories, and footwear. So that's our focus. Now, coming back home to Polyjet technology, 25 years old technology, the basis is simple. We are discussing combination of photopolymer resins, acrylic based, UV light, and motion. We can see that the printing block moves along X and Y, the build platform moves along the Z axis, and then it's all about drops of acrylic based photopolymers that becomes polymerized when exposed to UV light. 
We are discussing jetting of layers as thin as 14 microns. Imagine aluminum foil. This is the accuracy and the details that this technology can yield. And here it is in action, building layer by layer. Up until down, I didn't say anything new because that's 25 years old technology, proven, reliable, working uh, in, in quite a, a massive install base of us. But what if we look into the involvement? So starting off, it was single material printing, moving into two types of materials, to continue with three different materials, to end up with full color, texture, transparency, and opacity. And this is where we are today with our flagship uh, technology platform, the J8 series. Fine, this is still polyjet. But what if instead of printing on the tray and then layer by layer, we take the very same technology and print directly on textiles, print directly on fabric, and create mechanical adhesion between the printed polymer and the fabric, uh, the fabric uh, fibers. This is the key thing here. We are creating mechanical adhesion that resists washing. I'll show you in a minute how we passed all the certifications that resist all different things that you would like to do with a garment just due to this interaction. So polymerization is happening, but while networking, if you wish, with the fabric fibers. Let's take a look at what we have done with this technology. Let's see it. Need some voice here? Here we go. Great, so we have a technology, polyjet technology. We have a derivative of that, 3D fashion technology. Now, how do we start the journey? By collaborating with top designers. So here comes collection that started off in 2018 and watch the change in design that happens throughout the years. Starting off with pretty rigid, I would say, maybe more plastics view. And that was not so compelling to top designers looking into Julia Corner doing here, again, full color with some height because the machine could print up until 50 millimeters height. But then, lenticular effect. We are able to print full color and translucency. So when the model will walk, the changes will occur in the shades and colors on the garment. Printing on suede, printing on jeans, Printing along with traditional embroidery um, technologies to enable the old and the new on the same garment. Printing on wall, knitwear, can work fantastically with mechanical adhesion. And that's a uh, um, collaboration with Woolmark. And that's unique to us. We can start by printing on the tray, pause, place the fabric, and resume printing on top of that, creating double-sided effect, which you will see in a minute how it is used in wedding gowns. Of course, to express emotions with Yasna Rock, to connect the past with the new age, and to celebrate life with weddings. All of that were first steps into the awareness journey to reach out to those decision makers at Louis Vuitton, at Dior, 
and to reach out at the same time to their manufacturers, the very same recognized manufacturers that are doing thermal welding, that are doing embroidery, they now have J850 Textile, that's our solution with 3D fashion technology and offer unleashing creativity with this technology. This came at Milan Design Week, Atelier de Refuse, and this is an initiative that we did with Breitling Store, where they presented the latest and greatest uh, uh, Breitling uh, watches on little pillows of remains of velvet. Again, remember, sustainability is key here in anything we do. And you could tell that this 3D printing, uh, 3D fashion printing on the pillows made such an impact. We'll talk in a minute about automotive here, but this was a jacket that was 3D printed just for the kickoff event for the concept car of Peugeot. Peugeot got very seriously, as everybody else, into electrification, and now they wanted the interior to match this new driver experience. So along with our client and Tour de France, this is what they did. They simply 3D printed a new jacket that was playing a major role in the kickoff event. It was using even neon resins, like fluorescent resins, to enhance the shininess that was needed. This client is already running with four machines and more to come. Looking into automotive, so here, I need to be direct with you. We are now into concept cars, okay? This is not production, this is not about millions, but certainly Maserati chose our technology to show in Milan Design Week right in April, um, the Luce, kind of one-off. You can tell how nice and aesthetic and very smart is the design. If you recall, when I showed you the collection, it started off with a little bit more rigid and maybe taller one, which were very heavy and costly. And look at the aesthetic design. We are very good in printing at Alcantara, Dinamica, Ultra Suede. This is what the automotive companies are looking for. And again, the idea is to bring home, office, into the space of the car and give those feelings uh, by the design with 3D fashion technology. Maserati was first, then Mercedes, then Peugeot. Ital Design, being part of uh, Volkswagen company, uh, did the same and showcased that earlier in January. Moreover, we are not stopping here. I wouldn't say that we are ready for production, but we are working closely with a large company, a cluster as I call it, and they are certifying our resins to go into production to move into certification stores production. So I'm not saying millions of cars are coming up, but certainly a project of 3,000 cars in 2025 with this technology. And then the solution itself. So remember, it's about 3D printing, jetting technology, UV LED illumination, designed resins specifically for that, a family, new family that is called Vero Eco Flex, comes in full color and transparent, semi-flexible, so it's not really plastics. It feels much more elegant and smart, and not less important, all the certifications were obtained for this set of uh, resins. So we talk production platform here, not just exploration, that works with removable tray and additional production features to enable manufacturers of top brands, to enable automotive interior uh, designers to use what they need to show the next uh, innovation step. And this is just giving second life to a garment and that sustainability at its best. Let's take a look at it. We need some voice here. regular jacket with a particular accessory that is built on top of the machine.
washing at 40 degrees. No change to the adhesion. It works fantastically. Last thing, Stratasys. Stratasys is not a new name and a, and a very good member, I would say. Many years of experience, myself included, at Formnext, even previously Euromold. Today, we showcase five different technologies, among them the 3D fashion one. We have uh, more than 1,700 plus patents. And of course, the 3D fashion technology is well patented. You can see here our top customers, which are so important for us. And I'm very glad to say that we have additional 17 customers to date running 3D fashion technology day and night, OK? So this is happening, this revolution to take polyjet technology, which was always presented prototyping. No, we are now absolutely into end use parts, into fashion, where sustainability is our flag. We just recently, recently as two days ago, published life cycle analysis at which we compared how you produce 18,000 shoes, Alexander McQueen project, versus injection molding and other processes. The amount of reduction in usage of water, electricity, reduction of the steps from 12 steps needed to two steps only is happening. So I welcome you all to Hall 12 one uh, booth D121, Stratasys booth, you cannot miss it. We have a corner there for 3D fashion. Come visit us and I'll be more than happy to share more information. Thank you very much for your attention today. Thank you, Zavit. And right on time as well. We have time for a question. If anybody wants to raise their question now, rather than taking it to 121D121. At 121D121. You can't miss it if you go into that hall. OK. No? OK. Thank you very much, David. Sure, Thank thanks. And if someone is interested in samples, I'm having some. Raise your hand. I'm happy. Yeah, sure. Oh, there you go. Now they're interested. Yeah, let me, let me help you.